Hi, Gary, AP Tracks is really my partner in the business. We're always going to work here. We're going to do a short video on uh, changing hubs. A lot of people are having transfer kits where they're going from a Flares to a Yamaha or a Yamaha Flares. They require different hubs. So this is a short video on what's the difference between the hubs, what's the difference between the bearings, how much oil to put in, and then we're going to remove one to show you that it's very simple. On hubs, you have a multi-hub, which has four groups of three holes. This fits about 90% of the vehicles. You have a Polaris hub, which is four groups of two. There's a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. So it fits your old Polaris and your new Polaris. So a lot of times, if you have this on a Yamaha Wolverine and you want a Polaris and you order a transfer kit, they actually give you four new hubs and the correct drive gears. Now all the drive gears are mounted with four bolts. They're torqued to 52 pounds. So sometimes they'll just give you drive gears. Polaris runs a, a staggered 18, 17, 17, 18. Most other ones run an 1818. So if you go from a Polaris to a Yamaha, you'll get two drive gears. Basically, the shiny, the smooth part is the top part. The dimpled part is the bottom. You lay this on top here. They, they have actually factory Loctite with serrated edge bolts. Torque is 52 pounds. You stick them in there, torque them down. Now you change the drive gear. The next thing we're going to talk about is the oil bath system. Cancel's original track system was a 6822. It ran a two bearing system with a spacer in the middle. Um, we don't, they did not have a hole in top for oil. The oil was designed basically to, to go from the bottom of your shaft to here. So there isn't much oil as you see in here between here. It's just supposed to go between here. So that's why you don't have to fill the whole thing with oil. Otherwise it leaks. Now, um, this is the 6722-6522. They had some issues with the double bearing. They went to a triple bearing. As you can see, the gap is smaller. So this requires a lot less oil. And we're only filling from here to here, which is five or six quarts of 90 weight oil. Um, I, I recommend if you have the 6822 like this one here, when you slide it on, put your sleeve on, Squirt a bunch of oil in and then slide this on really fast. So this will just give you a little extra protection. The oil is, in case this plastic neoprene cracks, the oil will go into the bearings and it lasts three times longer. So we virtually have eliminated all bearing failures because of this process that Camsel has designed. Um, now, we're going to show you a simple way. The tools that you need, you need a basically a 19 millimeter wrench, 60 millimeter socket, 50 millimeter socket and a screwdriver. So right now, just to show you how simple it is to change drive gears, I'm gonna have Willie uh, change the drive gear real quick. We're gonna go from a... From an 18-tooth to a 17-tooth. Yes, and we're going from a universal to a Polaris. So while Willie does this, I'll explain. As you can see on new tracks, every now and then, there's a little seepage right here. This is not sealed very tight. That's why if you put too much oil in there, it will leak until it fits. It will leak until the oil gets down to here, then it stops leaking. So there's no harm in putting in too much, but usually five or six squirts, and that's all you need. But we're going to show you now, the first thing we do on replacing these, these uh, hubs here, thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the lock out on the top of the back here. And they're on pretty tight. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen uh, this tensioner, track tensioner right here. And you can move it all the way out. It will not come off. We use our tools, we can use a socket. Long way. Go all the way till it stops. Now you can see the track is loose. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to pop off the cap.
see the oil in here. We always put a rag underneath there. It makes it a little bit easier to clean up. This is basically a little bit of excess oil that will stop leaking once it hits the bottom of the race. Okay. Now the secret here, before we do anything else, we're going to take this washer here, we're going to flip it around. We want it to have pressure on there and we're going to put red Loctite on when it's ready. Uh, if you get a transfer kit, you will get a new hub and washer, but a lot of times you can use a factory one. Now, what we're going to do is, since the hub goes back, the track goes forward. Hub pulls out. Now, if you do it really fast, here's the other one. You can slide it back in without losing much oil. Lift the track over the top. We just changed the hubs. Now, sometimes the bearing pops out. See, we're losing just a little bit of oil, but it's nothing to worry about. Now we take the lug nut, the, the stud there, put it back on. Okay, we're gonna take the air gun, turn it on. Move the wheel out there. We're gonna get her pretty tight. Okay, now we're gonna tighten the, the track tension. We'll show you how to do that. Let's do the track tension first. And see. They make a tool for doing the track tension, but we've done this so many times, we don't have to. You can see the track is actually getting tighter. See now we got this is actually a little a little tight. We could loosen it just a little bit because it should move about an inch, you know. So uh, we will loosen it just a little bit. That's about what we want right there. It's a little one inch deflection. Okay, now we're going to tighten the lock nut on top. And this could be tightened pretty tight. It keeps the slider from moving in and out. So put some muscle behind it. It's a 10 bolt, 10 millimeter bolt. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to torque this to 95. Some customers complain about the caps. They keep popping off. You have to get rid of the oil. You have to get rid of the oil on the ring. Then when you put it in, it's going to want to come out. But if, if you dry it off and just hold it there and keep pushing it, it'll stay in. It creates a vacuum. It'll stay in there. Now you just need to change the hub from a universal to a Polaris. Now. Uh, most dealers think it's a very complicated job. Now we're going to show you how to do it without education, how long it takes us. I'll tell you, uh, 826. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to have Willie change this. We actually do this almost every set because we have to custom make them.
you stick your fingers in there to align the spacer in the middle. Pull your back on top. Catching again. Dealers charge an hour to do this. Maybe you should show them the video. <laughs>